You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Good morning and welcome to Catholic Chicago. Uh, My name is Father Matt O'Donnell. I serve as the pastor of St. Moses the Black Parish. I also serve as the priest coordinator for the Black Catholic Initiative here in the Archdiocese of Chicago. So it's great to be with all of you today as we come together for our Catholic Chicago show as we focus on the Black Catholic Initiative here in the Archdiocese. I'm really excited today to welcome Bishop Joseph Perry with us. Uh, Bishop Perry is our recently retired one of our recently retired auxiliary bishops here in the Archdiocese of Chicago. So good morning, Bishop Perry. Good morning, Father Matt. Well, thank you for taking time to be here today. You know, part of why I wanted to invite you on the show today was to celebrate your retirement (laughs) um, back on September 19th, so just a few weeks ago, a little over a month ago now. Uh, Pope Francis accepted uh, your letter to officially retire. And so just want to first say congratulations to you, um, especially for your 25 years of ministry as one of the auxiliary bishops here in Chicago. Thank you. Thanks very much. So I know uh, as we gather today, you're still, as I've heard you say, sort of easing into retirement. Something yeah, that I've you have to learn. I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like it's going well for you. Uh, <clears throat> Big smile on your face, probably a lot of stresses that you had a few weeks ago you don't have now. So really today, I just wanted to uh, have a conversation with you and to just maybe look back over these last 25 years that you've served as an auxiliary bishop in the archdiocese, as you've been the Episcopal vicar for Vicariate 6, to look back over the last 48 years, uh, more than 48 years, that you've served as a priest first in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, then as our bishop here in Chicago. So maybe the the first question just, does it feel like it's been 25 years? Not really. It's sped by rather fast. You know, 25 years is practically a generation. But I think the older you get, the sense is that time speeds up on you. As opposed to when you're a younger person, it seems like it just plods along. But yeah, 25 years has gone by very, very fast. And when you think of the idea of having to celebrate 25 years or even 50 years as a priest coming up, it really is it's mind-boggling of a sort. <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking uh, on my way into the studio today sort of how long I've known you. And so it goes, uh, I've known you since 2002, I think, since I was like 16. So <laughs> just a little over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um have had the opportunity to to really get to know you. And uh, I know you know this story, but the first time I met you was when you came to my Eagle Scout Court of Honor mm-hmm. uh, at my home parish of St. Fabian in Bridgeview. And then when I decided to go to the seminary, you were one of the first people that I spoke to and just have always had a lot of support. I've always served as a priest in Vicariate 6. So, uh, you know, I've, I feel personally just blessed to have known you uh, for all these years that you've been here in the Archdiocese. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I know you've been a a great support to many priests and many people throughout the Archdiocese. So I just wonder, these last 25 years that you've been serving as our auxiliary bishop, and particularly in Vicariate 6, just what are some of the things that you've learned that have maybe surprised you along the way or just lessons that you've learned uh, through ministry that you sort of look back now and are grateful for? I think one of the things I think uh, that I've learned is how beautiful people are. Uh, We oftentimes get tripped up with the problems, the aches and the pains, even a few problem personalities here and there. But over the years, uh, I've just been really been touched by people's faith, their trust in the church, and their desire to see the presence of their, their priests with them in their, the, the various steps of their lives. Uh, most of my years in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee were spent 
pretty much in the office working with the sad stories that come from marriage and family life. So I was in the parish only on weekends mostly. So that gives you one glimpse of the active church, the parochial church. But uh, once you become a bishop, you're thrust into the, the, the field, so to speak, more directly and more personally and upfront with people. And people are not shy these days to express to you not only their, their pains and their frustrations, but even their joys and how much they want you around uh, really impressed me here in Chicago. And I know you have roots <clears throat> here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, you hail from the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the first half of your, li your ordained life, your ministry was spent in Milwaukee. So did being assigned to the archdiocese feel like coming home uh, when it was time for you to begin your Episcopal ministry? It did. I'm sure my mother f felt elated when <laughs> the announcement came that they were sending me back to Chicago because I was away all through seminary training from high school onward up to ordination and then an additional 23 years as a priest in, in, in Milwaukee. And so that was a point of um, progress <laughs> as far as my mother was concerned. Yes, I did felt coming home, even though the, the city had changed a great deal from 1962 on to the time when I came back, which was 1998, a lot happened in the city, a lot happened in the world and in society in general. I had to relearn some parts of the city, never not knowing the, the north side that much, but mostly the south side where we were from and raised and so forth. But uh, no, it was a good homecoming. And my family in relation felt that rather tremendously because Chicago rolled out its typical hospitality at the time of the, the consecration there in, in um, Holy Name Cathedral. And all my relatives down south speak so eloquently, even to this day, how good that experience was for them and us as, as a family. I can't forget that. Every time I see the relatives, they talk about it. <laughs> it's good memories for them to have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's always a, a great thing for me when I meet people, and it, it's happened over the last few weeks, as people have learned of your retirement, that they remember Bishop Perry before he was Bishop Perry, and before he was Father Perry, mm -hmm. uh, people that you went to high school with or uh, grade school right at Our Lady of the Gardens, or mm -hmm. just some of uh, those relationships. And we won't, we're not going to share those stories mm -hmm. today as we come. <laughs> um, but yeah, just that, it, it, for, I think for a lot of people, you've just, you've been a staple um, mm -hmm. of life and of leadership and ministry. I'd have to imagine that after 25 years, you've done a fair number of confirmations <laughs> over the <laughs> fair years. Number. Um, but one of the things that I, I know in talking to other priests that they've always appreciated is that sense that when you come to a parish, your homilies are always unique and always speak uh, to the youth that are right there in front of you. I know from my own experience of being a pastor of predominantly African-American communities, that you always speak to the youth in a way that not others can do for them. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wonder, from your own looking back, what has the celebration of confirmations, because I'm sure you've been in many parishes, um, and maybe <laughs> you don't have the exact count at the top of your head, and celebrated and confirmed many young people, but mm -hmm. what does that feel like for you as you, you think about that and sort of that impact that you've made? I've enjoyed the confirmations. Um, in the earlier years, we averaged about 40 some a year. The average parish would have hmm, anywhere from 10 to 20, 40, 50. The larger parishes, 80 or 90 students. So that's quite a number. I've never braved counting the uh, number of confirmations from year to year. But um, I pray for the young people that I've confirmed. They're on my list of daily prayer uh, to God that they would, in their own lives, uh, become the best witnesses to the glory of the Lord here on earth. I think that's what it's all about. And for them, they have uh, some sources of memories of their Confirmation Day in, in ways in which we didn't when we came up. I was confirmed in the fourth grade. That was the practice the year after First Holy Communion back then. 
But these uh, young people have a more concerted program of formation and reflection uh, to that point where they can dedicate their lives to the Lord in his spirit. And I'm kind of jealous of that. But I'm also happy that I have a unique role in helping to impart that piece of good news to them at a threshold of their lives. You know, they're about to change and go into a new direction, new chapters for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my brother was <coughs> one of those young people that you actually confirmed um, mm. some years ago now when he was a, a freshman in high school. So my mom will be happy to know that, you know, someone is still praying for him. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just think that that's such a just a just that impact um, mm-hmm. of the number of parishes that you've been able oh, yeah. to visit and homilies that you've given and people's lives that you've been a part of. I was thinking, you know, one question I probably have never asked you is about your Episcopal motto. Mm-hmm. Um, every bishop, right, chooses a motto when mm-hmm. they when they're ordained. Could you just share a little bit what your motto is and maybe? How has that helped you as you've approached your ministry in these 25 years? My motto is in the Latin, emite me domine, which is lead me, or Lord, send me, or Lord. It comes from the sixth chapter of Isaiah, when Isaiah was anointed a prophet, and um, he found in himself kind of a surprised eagerness in his own self, but relying everything on the Lord and asking the Lord. He was generous enough to ask the Lord, send me wherever you want to send me. And that's been pretty much my theme of ministry over my years of priesthood and my years as a bishop. Yeah, I'd have to imagine God has sent you in all sorts of unexpected (laughs) places in these last 48 years. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a good time for us to uh, take a break. And when we come back from our break, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about, as you look to the future, Uh, As you ease into retirement and learn what retirement is, what are some of your hopes for the Black Catholic community here in Chicago and around the United States? So stick with us, and we'll be right back after this break. Community is core to Catholic Charities' founding mission. For more than 100 years, we have met people and families where they are, serving anyone in need, regardless of their faith, gender, race, or ethnicity. As our world absorbs the economic, political, and social aftershocks of the pandemic, 50% or more of the 6 million people living in Cook and Lake Counties have little or no savings. They are a paycheck away from zero. We are deeply grateful to everyone in the Catholic Charities community who partners with us to alleviate the suffering of the people we serve and offer them a better path forward. We are witnessing a message of mercy and hope to a world very much in need. Learn more at catholiccharities.net. I feel special. (laughs) I feel great. I got good grades. We've seen a huge surge in our kids now meeting or exceeding grade level. Come check us out. You may have never thought we were an option before. Our school communities provide students with academic excellence and character education in a supportive and stable learning environment. Come see for yourself. Visit artschicago.org slash findaschool. Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States and now it is our privilege to serve them. 
For more information on the Veteran Spike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219. Welcome back to our Black Catholic Initiative show on Catholic Chicago. Uh, my name is Father Matt. I'm today with Bishop Joseph Perry. We are celebrating uh, his retirement. I should have brought balloons or cupcakes or something uh, into the studio today. But really, just uh, it's just a great opportunity to have a conversation with uh, Bishop Perry to look back over the 25 years of Episcopal ministry here in the Archdiocese, but also to sort of look ahead um, because I think in ministry, you don't really retire fully. Uh, mm, you might have really. a few less meetings, but I'm sure yes. there's still work that uh, you're looking forward to. Anything crops up. <laughs> right, just like this radio show. Um, <laughs> but no, so we're grateful to have all of you who are joining us today as we uh, just share in conversation with Bishop Perry. So maybe a question that's on a lot of people's minds is, what are you going to do in retirement? <laughs> what is it that maybe you're... <laughs> looking forward to or hoping to do or actually have some time to do that maybe you haven't had in a while? Well, I have about a dozen books have been piling up that I would like to read. And then I have uh, several relatives up in their 90s that I should visit before they begin checking out. Mm -hmm. One of them is a contemplative nun who's been in an enclosed convent since 1947, a very lovely lady and relative on my dad's side of the family. We celebrated her 75th anniversary of her entrance into the convent two years ago, and she's 94 now, and uh, we need to pay her another visit before you know time gets very, very late for her. Other than that, there's people who tell me that I should wait six months before I put any hard plans down on paper or in my mind. They so say you should float into retirement rather than be so proactive in planning it, so... We'll see what crops up. I think by the 10th book I read, some things will have emerged as maybe possibilities. But a couple of things I <clears throat> want to do definitely, at least continue, is to uh, teach at Mundelein mm. as long as they'll have me. And um, uh, what else? That's about it so far. Besides working on the uh, Tolton cause, sainthood cause, um, he's venerable now, and we're still working on and studying um, some possibilities of some miracles that would advance him towards beatification. Yeah, so. and I, I don't know if this is maybe how you think <clears throat> of it, but uh, I think a lot of us see the, the cause of Father Tolton uh, for canonization as definitely a part of your legacy. Mm. Um, and, <laughs> I mean, you have been there since the beginning um, mm -hmm. and have really been mm -hmm. helping guide this, not just for us in the archdiocese, but really for the universal church. Um, and I think that's a, a gift that you definitely obviously are still working on, but a, a mm -hmm. gift that you leave for the church. I, I wonder why today, why, why do you think Father Tolton's cause today is so important um, well, I think uh, all the would-be saints, those who have causes pending, have something to say to the contemporary era. And uh, Father Tolton, some of the things he championed with his life and his ministry are still very much current in the African-American community. Virtues like perseverance and, and tolerance and patience and forgiveness uh, the needs of uh, our youth and um, the recognition of the gifts of the African-American Catholic community to the, the wor worldwide church, those things have never gone out of style. And I think he still has a voice in those things, even today. Yeah, I think as a Chicago priest myself, I mean, he's definitely an inspiration. And I know for myself as pastor at St. Moses the Black, we have Augustus Tolton Catholic Academy. So mm -hmm. I think about him often. Um, mm -hmm. I see his portraits around our school often. And, and I do think about that with our scholars, just sort mm -hmm. of his own life being a witness to what 
perseverance and persistence looks like. And mm-hmm. one of the things we talk about often in the school is just that Father Tolton really models what it looks like when God has a plan for your life. Sure. Um, and he I never think, gave up amidst some large odds, and he could have because life was different. He was singular. He was by himself. There weren't the supports. There weren't the programs. There weren't the institutions. And there weren't the politics that was in any way supportive of that time for him. So he was really a pioneer, more ways than one. Yeah, and I think about him in light of Renew My Church and some of the changes that we've experienced, Mm -hmm. especially in the Black Catholic community of Chicago. Uh, Parishes uniting together and new names and parishes trying to have new identity and new mission. And in a lot of ways, I mean, it kind of gets us back to our roots Mm -hmm. as a church as sure. the archdiocese, uh, it, especially for ministry in the Black Catholic community, of trying to plant seeds and begin something that's meant to last for generations. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how often maybe we think about that um, here, that so much of Father Tolton's own story can be inspiring for us as we continue through this process of Renew My Church. Indeed, of course. So as you think about the Black Catholic community here in Chicago, as we sort of look towards the future, what are some of your hopes? You know, I mean, you have 25 years of, <laughs> of, of serving as a leader uh, of the Black Catholic community, of the parishes that are pr- primarily on the south side of Chicago. They were part of the vicariate. You've personally um, have seen a lot of change over these years and demographic shifts and uh, all sorts of other ways that the church has changed. So with Mm -hmm. all of that wisdom um, that comes with the years of experience, what are some of your hopes as you you look to the future for the black Catholic community here in Chicago? I would hope that we would take some of the vision and the energy that we had with this from the very beginning and make sure that it matures for the future in the formation of solid faith communities in our parishes that we now have, a number of them grouped together into larger family parish situations. When I came here in 1998, there were 75 parishes in Vicariate 6. And already the year following, 1999 and 2000, uh, we noticed that there's certain things uh, that needed attention and certain stressors that were evident in our church communities uh, vis-a-vis aged buildings and um, aged populations and so forth. So we had a congress or a convocation on the feast of um, Martin de Porras. I don't know if you remember that, and the year 2000, where we brought all of the parishes together at De La Salle High School. And we talked about a number of subjects, and I'm amazed when I pick up the book of proceedings from that, how Renew My Church copied much of it, especially in terms of uh, just dreaming about and just what were the what ifs we came together and joined forces, merged parishes. Uh, We talked about schools. uh, We talked about the demographic shifts that were going on right in front of us, people leaving the city, Uh, people aging and numbers dwindling and uh, roofs and boilers and everything else belching and groaning and everything else. Those were remarkable several days. We had uh, meetings with the youth, meetings with the pastors, meeting with the people, and uh, we threw out some, some ideas that have taken on fruition even beyond the early 1990s when Cardinal Bernardine had had merged 30-some parishes. And, well, it became more critical with a new bishop. So what's Uh, kept you hopeful in all of that? So, I mean, I hear you as you're talking about sort of where we've been and mm -hmm. where we find ourselves in this present moment. And sometimes it might feel like there's just a lot of similarities, right, from the past and where we are in this present moment. But we're supposed to be people of hope. So what's kept you sort of hopeful uh, throughout all of this? People by and large stuck with us through it all, through all of the dreaming and the vision. We would hope that these parishes can uh, solidify themselves, become permanent homes for most of the people, 
in hopes that we might be able to stretch out our, har- our arms and hands and, and embrace others to join us, uh, to keep these communities alive because the indicators are not all that supportive mm-hmm. in terms of the aging demographic, to say nothing of population shifts in Chicago. And um, it looks like it could be a smaller church in the future for all of us, not just black Catholics, but for all of us. When you look at the indicators of religion and religious practice in the country at this time, those are sources of concern, but we can certainly minister to that so that it doesn't turn into something awful, but turn into something opportunistic for us as a faith community and what Catholics we believe can offer society, offer Chicago, offer the church. Yeah, and I think as we look at the black Catholic community today and the parishes, while we're still learning our names and learning our identities and getting to know what our our mission is, I think what we've seen is that our parishes are needed Mm -hmm. in the neighborhoods that we find ourselves on the South and the West sides. And the black Catholic community in a lot of ways continues to teach the archdiocese Mm -hmm. and, and others what it looks like to really build community and to inspire witness and make disciples, some of the imperatives of Renew My Church. Mm -hmm. So it's it's encouraging to hear you um, as a priest and a bishop after these 48 years (laughs) still have that hope, because I think that's what a a lot of us need, uh, us younger people. um, Maybe (laughs) everybody needs to have that type of hope as we look towards the future, because as you say, Bishop, there's a lot that seems to be working against us, Mm -hmm. but what you said at, at the very beginning of the show of the people. There's the people. Especially that our young going. people and young adults. Yeah, and they have we, an energy that we need. Exactly. We have to tap into that uh, intentionally. We have to tap into that. That's going to be the future. Well, we still need your wisdom and your prayer and your guidance in order for all of that to happen. So I think, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just thinking back to that, your Episcopal motto about being sent um, and having that sort of spirit of inviting the Lord to send us uh, into the future, I think that is a great gift for us. So again, I just want to say thank you uh, to you, not just on behalf mm-hmm. of myself, but on behalf of all of us that you've served uh, and you've led in Vicariate 6 over the years. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, there's so much about you that people don't even realize. Like uh, many of those priests in the archdiocese will say that you're one of the best professors that we had uh, (laughs) from your canon law class. I mean, the contributions you've made uh, to the black Catholic community in the United States and beyond your legacy uh, for the universal church as you promote the cause of Father Augustus Tolton. Um, I just think in the the 25 years that you've been a bishop, you've done a whole lot. And Mm. I hope you know that people are truly grateful for that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's a blessing. Thank you. Well, thank you, Bishop Perry, for joining us today and for taking a look back over the 25 years and sort of uh, sharing some of that wisdom and vision as we look to the future. So thank you for joining us today. This has been uh, the Black Catholic Initiative on Catholic Chicago. You can find us on youtube.com backslash Catholic Chicago. Have a great day.